Hello everyone and welcome back to Learn to Play TV. Today we will be doing an unboxing of the Man of Steel starter set and in my opinion this is the best way that you can really get into Hero Clicks. It comes with everything that you're going to need to start off. So let's go ahead and dive right in and go over our little mini review of this starter set. So stay tuned to the end of this video because at the end we're going to find out who won the Superman marquee figure. So this box has some really cool artwork. I am liking this. You do have your six characters, so I believe you get Superman, uh, this General Zod, I think this is Jor-El, we have Kryptonian Soldier, Namek, and Fiora, I believe that's her name. You get your character cards, object tokens, your rule book, um, and two full color maps. I believe it's just like the normal maps, which are just double sided. And you get your two dice in this set. Let's take a look. So before we move on to our little review on the characters you get out of the starter set, let's also take a look at what you get. You get your WizKids 2013 Core Rulebook. This is going to go over the majority of the rules and how to play the game. A lot of great information in here, good reading. As well as the most important thing you get is your Powers and Abilities card. Now this card is updated for 2013. This has the new changes to some of the abilities, as well as they are debuting a new ability, which is a pink ability. Now these pink abilities are going to be really cool, give a new aspect of the game. For your speed ability, you have Sidestep here. This allows you to give your character a free action that allows your character to move a lock speed value of 2. So I'm wondering if you're going to be able to utilize this like if someone's coming and charging at you and maybe you could just step to the side and they'll miss. That'd be kind of cool. But I don't think we quite have any characters that have pink abilities out yet, so we'll have to see how these play out. And for your attack abilities, we have what's called Precision Strike that states when this character makes an attack, it can't be evaded and the damage dealt can't be reduced below one or transferred. Now that can be cool, especially if you're going up a character that has Mastermind and he's just dishing all the damage he's taking out to someone else. Here's a really cool one, which is called Invincible, which states half of the damage dealt to this character is ignored. That ability looks really cool. I can't wait to try that one out. And last for the damage abilities, we have what's called Empower. And this states when an adjacent friendly character makes a close combat attack, this character modifies the adjacent friendly character's damage value by plus one. Now this is going to be my favorite ability out of the new pink abilities. Sidestep is pretty close, but I, I really like to get in people's faces and really do some damage. I really think I'm going to utilize Empower a lot. Moving right along, you also get your light and heavy objects here. You get your special terrain markers, and on the back of these special terrain markers are just the rubble markers, so if you're end up taking out a wall or something, you can use these to mark that. You get your two dice. Now these are a little small for me. Some people really like to use these. Me, I prefer regular sized dice, but this is cool. Definitely need these to start off. You also get your character cards, and these will go over all the abilities that your characters can use. And in this set, you also get your HeroClix Online Redemption Code. Now this code can be used to redeem some special Man of Steel characters on HeroClix Online. And if any of you guys play, I'm going to give this code to you. Remember to go ahead and subscribe and leave a comment down at the bottom. And I will go ahead and choose my favorite comment and get in contact with you. And we'll go ahead and we'll give you this code. So let's take a look at the map you get out of the Man of Steel set. This is an outdoor terrain map, which really looks kind of cool now that I'm looking at it. You have a lot of elevated terrain out on the outer edges of the actual map, which are all rooftops, which would be very, very cool. Um, especially if you have a team that has some flyers with some range up there, you can park them up there and have pretty good range over most of the map. You also have a lot of hindering terrain, which is located in the areas here down below, as well as some blocking terrain, but not too much. I'm really just liking the landscape on this map. This map really has some cool just features here. Looks like there was a big battle, almost like a plane crash that happened here. Got some cars smoking and burning. So who knows, maybe this is an actual scene in the movie and we're actually giving you a spoiler right now. I hope not. But if it is, this map looks really cool and it's probably going to be one of my favorite maps to play on. I might have to try this map out and uh, see how it plays. This looks really cool. 
I'll say teams that use a lot of stealth would be very nice for this. There's a lot of hindering terrain. Again, ranged teams could probably find themselves right at home, especially if they have the flyer ability. They can get right up on top of these rooftops and take some pop shots and snipe a couple people that are out on the map. Now here's our second map. It's got a lot of elevated terrain. The ground level starts out down here where you have your water area and you have a couple hindering terrain here on the outsides, but this terrain just keeps getting higher and higher so where you have the first level, second, third, and fourth. You're not going to be able to cross up into corners like this here. You're really going to have to make sure you go up the exact ways that they're telling you to go to get up there. Unless you have flying and you can completely bypass all that. But this map looks like, you know, maybe there was a big battle. Superman and his opponent came crashing into the street and just made this giant crater here. And you have all your sewer lines pouring water into the middle. Very cool looking map. I have played on this map before. Now, when I played on this map, the ironic thing is my opponent was actually using the Marquee Superman. And he has a really insane defense ability that allows him to have a really wicked regeneration. And what it allows this Superman to do is if he is on an outdoor terrain map, depending on his elevation, he can then add that elevation to his D6 roll for regeneration. So when I was fighting my opponent, I had him down to his last click, and he was up here on the fourth level elevation. He was up here, and he was going to roll for regeneration. Now, if I didn't push all my guys to try and kill him, get him out of there, no matter what he rolled, he could potentially get to his first click just from being on the fourth elevation. So for this map, it's just wicked for that marquee Superman. But enough of the maps, let's see what else we get out of this set. These are the six characters that you start off with from the starter set. And I'm going to go through and tell you the point values and point out a couple abilities for each one of these characters. The first we're going to go over is Superman. And he can be played at two point values. He has a 200 and a 150 point value. He's got a trait that is called an inspiration, which allows friendly characters with lower point values to begin or end an action adjacent to Superman. They are able to use willpower for that action. Superman's first click, he starts off with charge and super strength. He does have impervious, which is really nice for his defense at an 18 to start, and he has probability control. This isn't too bad. Looking at his dial, he's fairly strong and right on the money for a Superman character. And at 200 points, I'm feeling that he's a pretty decent character. He does have a damage ability that starts on his second click that allows Superman to use defend and probability control. Now here's the catch. He can only use these abilities to replace the defense value and reroll rolls for characters that are not on their first click. His 150 point line isn't that bad either. He starts off on his first click with a 9 hypersonic with super strength at a 10 attack. He does have invulnerability with the 4 damage. Not bad to start off. He holds on to those stats up until his second click where all he really loses is one movement but he still holds hypersonic as well as his attack drops down to a 9 but he still holds on to super strength. As you get a little farther into the dial, on his third and fourth click, he loses his hypersonic and gains running shot, and he continues to drop down in his speed value, where he drops to an 8 and then a 7 by this fourth click. So he's really starting to slow down for a Superman. And on his fourth click, he loses his invulnerability and picks up toughness. Toughness is nice and all, but with the damage output that is coming out on these newer clicks, everyone's got around a 3 to 4 damage. The minus one with toughness, it'll help, but it's not really going to save him for much. Overall, for 150 points, I say it's a fairly decent character. He starts to drop off towards the back end of his dial with regen on his last click. So you're only getting about six clicks of life for 150 points. But overall, he's definitely playable. And here is Jorel, who could also be played at two point values, one at 100 and the other at 75. Now for 100 points, he has 7 clicks of life, which isn't bad for 100 points. What's really nice about Jorel is his first few clicks, he has Leap Climb, which would be nice to get away from characters. And on his first and third click, he has TK. Now that TK could be quite helpful, especially if you pair him up with like a 200 point Superman and have a nice little 300 point team running. You could TK Superman up to the front lines to get in there and start dealing some damage. And keep Jorel towards the back with his 6 range taking pop shots. 
I think the part where he really shines is he has a damage ability that allows him to use outwit and probability control for his first two clicks. So far for 100 points, this guy's a thumbs up for me. He's looking really good. Let's take a look at a 75 point dial. On his first click, he still has lead climb with TK, which is nice. He does have toughness with probability control. It's not bad for a starting click at 75 points. Now when he gets to his next click and beyond, he loses his leap climb and gains plasticity. He also gains a defense ability that allows him to use energy shield deflection, which could be really nice at range, and invulnerability. Now that's not very bad. He could be used for range and close combat if he needed to get in there. The invulnerability is going to help him with the minus 2 to damage if he does sustain any. But personally, I think he would be best at kept at range of the energy shield deflection. I think that'll help with the invulnerability much more for you than getting him up in someone's face. So I think range is where you're going to want to keep this guy. His last three clicks, he gains the ability to use pulse wave as well as he gains range combat experts. So again, this is definitely a piece that I would want to keep at range. It would be nice maybe pairing up with that Superman to really get in there and deal some damage. For both point values, I'm going to give this guy a thumbs up. Not a bad character at all. Next up is Fora, who could be played at 100 points. Now what's really cool about her is she has traded stealth which would be really nice for a map with a lot of hindering terrain. But what's really cool is that even if you are on a map that doesn't necessarily have a lot of hindering terrain that you can put her in, her trait also allows her to use super senses as long as she's the target of a ranged combat attack. So she does have a little extra security there to kind of help her get out of any kind of damage that may be coming her way, which is very cool. Now, Fiora's dial is anything but ordinary. I... I I'm almost at a loss to try and figure out exactly what they're trying to do here, but it is interesting. Her first click starts off with Leap Climb with an 8 movement. She is a sharpshooter. She gets Psychic Blast for a 10 attack. She has 17 toughness on her defense, and she has a 3 damage value with Shape Change. So off the bat, I'm thinking that she's also going to be a range character. Now, when she gets hit and goes to her second click, she still maintains Leap Climb, but she gets Blade Claw's Fang, which would be for a close combat attack. But let's go ahead and move on. When she gets to her third and fourth click, she gains Mind Control, as well as Psychic Blast. A nice thing is, on those clicks, she also gains Willpower, so you will be able to push her and hopefully deal out a little bit more damage. Now here's the part that really kind of gets me. Her last two clicks, so on her fifth and sixth click, she gains Flurry. Now, on her sixth click, she also has Blade Claw Fang. So, Flurry's Claws is not bad at all, but again, also have to be in close range for this. I think I'm still a little bit on the fence with this character. I wouldn't mind playing it just to get a feel for how it plays. Overall, for 100 points, I feel that there's probably a lot better characters out there to fill your team with. So up next, we're at the Kryptonian Warrior, who can be played at two point values, one at 75 points, the other at 50. This character does look pretty well rounded to me. He's got some pretty cool traits that allow him to modify his attack value and his damage value by plus one when he's attacking a character that has the keyword Trio of Doom or the Superman Enemy Team ability. His other trait, which is pretty cool, is called Fighting Spirit that allows Kryptonian Warrior to use willpower as long as he is within 8 squares of another character that has the Warrior keyword. At his 75 point value, he does get 6 clicks of life, which is not bad for 75 points. He starts off with charge as well as exploit weakness, which is really nice for 3 damage. On his second click, he has flurry blades, which would be really nice to really get in there and deal some damage. I'm really starting to like his 75 point dial. Now his 50 point line starts on this third click. He has charge blades, which again is also very nice. And the nice kicker about this is he has exploit weakness on this click with a three damage. What's nice about this click is you do have a couple options and for 50 points, it's well worth it. For his last three clicks, he does gain combat reflexes, which will be very, very difficult for his opponent to hit. That puts him up at 18 and 17 defenses through the remaining three clicks. Overall recommendation for this character is definitely a thumbs up. Great piece for 75 points or a 50 point value. Definitely have to keep him in mind when I'm building my teams. 
Next, this big guy here is Namek, and he can be played at 100 points. Now, this character is a giant, and that can be used towards his advantage, or it could be his downfall. The only reason why I say it could be a downfall for Namek is because of him being a giant and his dial really putting him up close. This leaves him wide open from attacks at range and even from line of sight because even if you are based with a character, if your opponent has another ranged character behind that character that you're based with, he can still take pop shots at you because you tower over him. But that's just some extra food for thought. Now let's take a look at his dial. On his first click, he has an 8 movement with charge, which is not bad. Get him right into the battle with a 10 attack, and he has invulnerability with a 17 defense. Now, hopefully that will help sustain him if he does end up taking a hit. Now, when you get him to his second click, he does lose his charge, but he gains an 11 attack power, which would be very nice. And he gets toughness on his defense, and his attack power, he actually gets a special power called Enrage. This allows Namek to use Battle Fury and Close Combat Expert. Now what's cool about Close Combat Expert is with the new rules from the 2013 pack card or the Powers and Abilities card, it allows you to choose where you would like the plus two values to be applied to. So you can either apply it to your damage, which he's at a three damage on this click and you can bump it up to five with that plus two. Or if you need a little bit more attack power to get through your opponent's defenses, you could also place it on your attack power or even go one and one. Overall, I would say this character is worth the 100 points. I'm going to give him a thumbs up on this. You know, let me know what you guys think as well. And here's the big bad guy himself, General Zod. He can also be played at two point values. He has a 200 point and a 100 point value to choose from. For his 200 point value, he has eight clicks of life. And for 200 points, it's not bad, because when I'm looking at his dial here, he does have a lot to back himself up. On his first click, he starts off with Running Shot with a 10 movement. He has a 10 attack with an 18 defense and invulnerability. And he also has a damage ability. It's called Military Strategist. This allows General Zod to use Leadership and Perplex. Now, he can use Perplex normally, or he may also target each friendly character that is within line of fire and with whom he shares a keyword with. He has Kryptonian, Soldier, and Trio of Doom. Now, I'm going to have to get clarification on this because when I read this ability, I read it as he can use Perplex by normal means, or as long as characters that share keywords with him are within line of fire, he may target all of them and perplex all of them up. Now, if that's the case, this could be an amazing piece to play. I could see him being the tent pole for a nice soldier army, or even if you were to play all the trio of doom. So take that for what it's worth. On his second click, he keeps his abilities. He still has his running shot, but he does lose one movement, so he's down to a nine. He does pick up an additional attack power, so he's at an 11 on his second click, and he still keeps his damage ability, which is that leadership and perplex. Now, as we get into his 100 point value, which starts on his third click, he maintains his running shot with a 9 value and his energy explosion. Now, he does lose his invulnerability and picks up toughness, and also gains an 18 defense. His fourth and fifth click also look decent. His fourth click, he maintains his running shot, but loses it on his fifth, where he gains leap climb. So that'll be nice to get away from adjacent characters. On both clicks, he picks up Psychic Blast, so he does lose his energy explosion. And he goes down to a nine attack. So this is where it looks like he's starting to kind of slow down on his dial. He does keep decent defense abilities and his toughness. He's sitting at an 18 defense and then drops to a 17 on his fifth click. But he also keeps his enhancement. Now for his remaining three clicks, he does maintain his leap climb, but drops to a seven movement across his last three clicks. He does pick up Blade Claw's Fangs. I think the best part about his last three clicks is that he loses his toughness and he gains combat reflexes. So this is really going to help him maintain his 18s and 17 defenses. I'm going to give General Zod a thumbs up on both 200 and 100 point values. I can see him really being the forefront for like a soldier team, um, really getting in there and just getting in people's faces. All right, guys, now it's time to say thank you to you. If you guys watched our last video with the Man of Steel unboxing, I wanted to say thank you and offer this Superman marquee figure as a way to say thank you for your support. 
and the time has come to choose a winner. So we had a lot of people join as subscribers and really had some great comments from all of you and thank you to all of you guys. I can't say it enough. You guys definitely make my day and make this all worthwhile. I love doing this. So because of such a great outcome, I felt I should give something additional with this. So here's how it's going to go. I have an extra Iron Man 3 marquee figure here. And today we're going to choose a second person out of all these names here at the bottom. Now first we will give away the Superman marquee and here's the catch. Whoever wins first you are going to have the choice of which marquee figure you want. You can either choose the Superman or you can go for the Iron Man and we'll get that shipped off to you and hopefully you guys enjoy it. So let's get into this drawing and see who's going to win these two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these names and we're going to fold them up and we're going to put them inside this Batman vehicle booster box. And I'm going to do a blind draw and whoever I pull out is going to be our winner. So give me one minute. We're going to get these all folded up and get this started. All right, there we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to throw these in here. There's nothing in the box. Nope, just an empty box. Take all these here. All righty. All right, so... Here it is, moment of truth, who's going to be our winner? All right, and this is going to the Ultimate Ninja. You are our winner. Thank you very much for your support, and thank you to everyone else. Now, you are going to be able to take your pick at which marquee figure you would like. So the Ultimate Ninja is our first winner. Now, for the second one, Let's go ahead and see who our second winner is going to be. And you will get the figure that is left. It could either be the Iron Man figure or the Superman, depending on what the Ultimate Ninja chooses. And our second name is... Suicide Fox. I will be sending you guys uh, messages to get your information. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get your name up here. There we go. So congratulations to both of you guys, and thank all of you for your support. We will be doing more of these giveaways. You guys have a great week, and I will see you all later.